All right, let's dive into something that is honestly one of the most beautiful and elegant systems in all of science, quantum numbers. Now, you can think of it as this incredible, unique address that tells us exactly where an electron is and what it's doing inside an atom. So, how does it all work? I mean, that's a great question, right? We're always told that atoms are almost entirely empty space, so how on earth can we even begin to describe where an electron might be? Well, the answer actually comes from the solutions to a famously complex set of equations by Erwin Schrödinger, which, it turns out, give us a kind of coordinate system for this bizarre, tiny universe. You know, the easiest way to wrap your head around this whole thing is to think of it like a cosmic address. We're going to use a set of four numbers to zoom in, going from a really broad area down to a super specific, unique identifier for every single electron. Okay, let's build this address. We're going to start with the biggest, most general part, the city. In the quantum world, the city is the electron's main energy level, or its shell, and this is defined by our very first quantum number. This is the principal quantum number, and we just call it n. What's so great about this one is how simple the rule is. A higher number for n just means the electron is in a bigger orbital, it has more energy, and it's generally hanging out farther away from the nucleus. So if n equals 1, you're right in the city center. If n equals 7, you're way out in the suburbs. Simple as that. So, we found our city. Awesome. Now we need to narrow it down a bit, right? We need to find the specific street. This is where our second quantum number comes into play. It tells us the actual shape of the orbital. That's the region of space where the electron is most likely to be found. And here's where we see this really cool nested structure. The secondary quantum number, or L, actually depends on n. Its value can be zero or any whole number all the way up to one less than n. So, using our analogy, this just means that a bigger city can have way more different kinds of street designs. Now, to keep from getting all these numbers mixed up, scientists gave letters to the L values. So an L of zero is called an S orbital, an L of one is a P orbital, and so on. Fun fact, these names actually come from the way early scientists described the lines they saw in atomic spectra. Sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental. Pretty cool, huh? Let's look at the most basic one. When L is zero, we get an S orbital. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a sphere. It means the electron has a probability of being found anywhere inside that spherical shape around the nucleus. But now, watch what happens when we go to the next level. When L equals 1, the shape gets a lot more interesting. We get a P orbital, which looks like a dumbbell, with two lobes on opposite sides of the nucleus. And notice that point right in the middle? The electron is never, ever found right there at the nucleus. That point of zero probability is called a node. Okay, we've got our city and the design of our street. But, you know, a street can run in a few different directions, and it has lots of houses. So now we need a specific house number. This brings us to our third quantum number, which tells us how that orbital shape is actually pointing in 3D space. This is the magnetic quantum number. We call it ML, and it also follows that nested pattern. Its possible values depend on L. And what's so powerful about this is that the number of possible values you can get for ML tells you exactly how many of those orbitals can exist at that energy level. And here's exactly how that works. For an s orbital, where l is 0, ml can only be 0. I mean, that makes perfect sense, right? How many ways can you orient a sphere? Just one. But for a p orbital, where l is 1, ml can be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. That's three different values, which means there are three possible orientations for that dumbbell shape, one along the x-axis, one along the y, and one along the z. So we have the city, the street, and the house number. The address is almost done. But what about the actual resident inside the house? Our last quantum number is totally different. It doesn't describe the house or the orbital at all. Instead, it describes a fundamental property of the electron itself. You see, early on, experiments showed that electrons behave like they're tiny spinning magnets. But the first three quantum numbers couldn't explain this at all. So, two graduate students, Godsmith and Ullenbeck, proposed that there had to be a fourth number to describe this built-in magnetic property. And that's what the spin quantum number, ms, is. It's almost shockingly simple. It can only have one of two values. You can think of it as spin up, which we call positive one half, or spin down, negative one half. Every single electron in the universe has one of these two spins. That's it. And there you have it, our complete four-part quantum address, 
But this whole system doesn't just exist on its own. There is one final, absolutely unbreakable rule that governs this entire atomic neighborhood, and it changes everything. So, let's just quickly put it all together. The full address starts with N, the principal quantum number. That's our energy level, the city. Inside that city, L tells us the orbital shape, our street. Then ML specifies that orbital's orientation, that's our house number. And finally, MS describes the electron spin, a unique property of our resident. And this is it, the Pauli exclusion principle, named for Wolfgang Pauli. This is without a doubt one of the most fundamental laws in all of quantum mechanics. And what it says is that no two electrons in the same atom can have the exact same four-number address. At least one number has to be different. So what does that actually mean? Well, this leads to an incredibly important conclusion. Let's say two electrons are in the same orbital. That means they have the same n, the same l, and the same ml. So, to follow the Pauli rule, they must have different spin values. One has to be spin up, plus one half, and the other has to be spin down, minus one half. And that, right there, is why any single orbital can only ever hold a maximum of two electrons. And here's the ultimate takeaway. This incredibly elegant set of rules, this four-number address system, and the exclusion principle, it's not just some abstract idea. It dictates exactly how electrons fill up inside atoms, and that, in turn, defines all of chemistry, how they bond, how they react. It literally builds the entire structure of the periodic table from the ground up. It's the blueprint for matter as we know it. It really makes you wonder what else in our universe is secretly governed by such simple yet unbelievably profound rules.